wife and I took in my 18-year-old neglected cousin after her parents abandoned her on her birthday, and now half of my family has turned against me. Me, 30M, and wife, 27F, own a sizable farm that is usually the nexus of family events. Five bedrooms, three bathrooms, 300 acres and electrical hookups for four campers so the whole clan can come stay for extended visits in the summer. We built it that way deliberately. My cousin Bill, M early 50s, has a daughter Alice, 18F, from his first marriage. His first wife was an immigrant with no family in our country and no contact with any family in her home country. She passed away when Alice was two and Bill remarried Tanya, F early 50s, six months later. They have since had three kids, 14M, 12M, 8F. Alice is a brat. Everything in their house revolves around either the boys, their two oldest together, or their princess, their daughter together, and Alice is left behind. She doesn't get to go on family trips, they wouldn't pay for extracurricular stuff, she couldn't take elective classes that had extra fees etc. I'm not a smart man but I can recognize a kid that's hurting inside and being neglected. She's like Mr. Hyde with M and Dr. Jekyll elsewhere. For the last four summers she's been coming to work on my farm because her parents don't want her around over summer break. She turned 18 recently and leading up to her birthday her dad was very adamant that she was being kicked out of the house when she turned 18 because it will teach her responsibility. We, wife, Alice and I, discussed it and early on her birthday we pulled up with my truck and packed her stuff up. We only packed things she purchased herself or things that were given to her by another person. My boss got creative with our benefits provider so we can get Alice on my medical benefits until she finishes university, she starts in a few weeks, so she's able to go to therapy, he reads this subreddit a lot so even though this is a throwaway, I know you'll read this chief. Thank you, and she's able to get back into sports while still saving her money. This is where it all comes apart, Bill and Tanya are pissed that we took her in and refused to come to family events. Part of the family refused to attend as well because I'm undermining Bill and Tanya, I'll understand when I have kids. After they refused to attend events, a few others said that with gas being so expensive and not everyone attending they'd skip as well. My answer of okie dokie come if you want and don't if you don't further upset people who thought I should have tried harder to get people to come so now we're down to about one quarter of the family in attendance for events. My aunt suggested that we have Alice over on weekends and that she stays in a dorm during the week to smooth things over. I think that's dumb, but I'm dumb and stubborn. My wife thinks it's dumb and she's really smart but also very much attached to the situation. Alice said she'd rather stay with us but would try the dorms to help make peace. Ida for not going with the dorm suggestion to keep the peace? Edit for info, I called Alice a brat and my original post was way past the character limit but in some of the stuff that got pared down I explained it more. Typical teenage acting out but cranked up. Slamming doors, screaming matches with her stepmom, swearing. Probably three or four big blowouts a week and sometimes over some pretty disproportionately small stuff. I've watched her grow and the acting out definitely came after the exclusion from family stuff. Edit 2, thank you everyone. Gonna keep on keeping on. Bit of a mini update, I ripped the bandaid off with the old fam jam and told them that fewer mouths to feed isn't the punishment they thought it was, anyone else who was coming is still welcome and I'd have the extra cash from not feeding so many people to help the folks concerned about gas prices make it out if they so chose. I'm in like, four different family group chats and they're all lighting up. I'm going to turn my phone on silent for a while and let the sparks fly. I'll check in on the post in a while and if anything noteworthy comes up and it's interesting I'll give you all an update in the future. Edit 3, August 23, 2022. Alrighty, here's the update on the situation and a little background info for some consistent topics in the comments. So, my family likes to gossip and they're damn efficient at it. If your truck breaks down with only you in it 5 miles from home word has reached every aunt and cousin before you're in your door. When I put the word out, it traveled fast. This morning I've been called all the names in the book and some new ones so there may be a revised and updated edition of said book coming out. I've been told I'm a good guy, a bad guy, I'm stupid, I'm smart, I'm short-sighted, I'm thinking ahead. It's been neat. Long story short, I've got about a dozen relatives telling me thanks and they'll buy me a pint next time they're out and an about triple that who never want to speak to me again so those are both significant victories. Now, nobody here really cares about me, we're all about Team Alice here. She's a Redditor apparently and came across the post independently of me showing her. There were tears, born of stress and relief I think, and she's going to be staying here with us until she's ready to start the next chapter of her life, whatever and whenever that might be. She's got classes picked, her college picks first year classes for you for the most part so it was a couple electives, and is looking into the women's rec league for a hockey team when the season starts so she's all set on that front. Regarding feeding everyone and paying for gas, without going into details, I was very fortunate as a young man to be working very very hard at a job I was woefully underqualified for while a very wealthy person was on site. Basically right place, right time and the chief took me in and mentored me. We have made a lot of money on a business venture together in addition to me working for him and since then I haven't exactly had a few money but enough that I was able to buy the property I live on outright and build my home here with my wife who also makes good money. 
Family is important to both of us and neither of our sides of the family tree have much for money so we've done our best to make sure money isn't a barrier to getting together and seeing one another. Now, the big news, Tanya drove down to my house this morning. Bill and I had some very loud, very angry words when he drove down last night after I chose the nuclear option in the family group chat so she actually waved a white flag from her car when she pulled up. I shooed the dogs and alpaca away and went out to talk to her, brought her out a muffin and we had a bit of a chat. Allegedly, Bill was threatening to kick Alice out to scare her straight and that they weren't actually going to kick her out and they were caught off guard when we showed up on the morning of her birthday. I told her that she was missing the point and that I'm not sure I could use small enough words or short enough sentences to explain it to her if she thought that was the only problem. She cried, she peeled out of my driveway at Mach 7 and it's been radio silent since which I'm currently enjoying. Thanks everyone for the support. I'm not really a Reddit guy so I don't imagine I'll be back but for my brief stay here, you definitely don't live up to the negative reputation the rest of the internet has given your site. You're a good bunch, keep your sticks on the ice. Comments where Op has replied. In our conversations about the dorm, I told her that it was 100% her decision but that I really didn't care about cousins I only see when I'm feeding them show up and that I wanted her to make the call that made her happy. Consensus between her and my wife seems to be that maybe in a few years the dorm would be a good step between living at home and getting her own place but staying with us for now is what she wants. More about Alice's relationship with Bill and Tanya. At this point it's pure speculation but I've always sort of picked up that Bill is of the opinion that Tanya and their kids together are his family and she's this sort of Harry Potter-esque relation he's stuck with. At first I thought it was a race thing, her mom was from Guatemala and she has dark skin and pin straight dark hair rather than being pale curly haired like the rest of us, but as she aged, if you compare photos of her mom to her at the same ages, they could have been twins. I think it's a lot of jealousy from Tanya and Bill is just a dirtbag so I have no idea how his brain works. More on Oop using the term brat. What I meant is that Alice acts out pretty severely and is like a completely different kid with her folks than anywhere else. If you ask her teachers, coaches, other relatives who have her over will all tell you she's a great kid, smart and compassionate. You see her at home with her parents and it's a different story. I 100% recognize that she's acting out so badly because the only time she gets any attention at home is when she's being punished but I cut the part explaining that out because I'm not such good with the wordsmithing sometimes. Alice doesn't cause harm from anything I've ever seen or been told. She stomps off and slams her bedroom door, gets into shouting matches with her stepmom and swears a lot. More about the rest of the family. Her dad and I have locked horns over this a few times. I was still a young gun myself when her mom passed so I haven't always been in a position to do anything more than lock horns but I've at least been here. Not to excuse the extended family but I think a fair few of them would be more sympathetic if they lived closer and didn't just get a spin on it over Facebook and saw what the branch of the family tree that lives here sees. They're not a big league of evil aunts and uncles, they're just kinda ignorant and have been fed a very creative interpretation of the truth by Bill and Tanya for over a decade with no evidence of there being more to it. Plus my dislike for Bill and Tanya is quite well known in our family which also colors their perception of the situation a bit I'd wager. Bill remarried Tanya quickly after his first marriage. That does sound ominous when it's put like that, but as far as I know there's nothing untoward there. Alice's mom was hit by a random drunk driver and Bill's just a schmuck. Without putting the family dirty laundry out there, my understanding is that their marriage was born out of convenience and not necessarily love. That's its own story that doesn't really belong on Reddit. Oop is voted NTA. Update, July 18th, 2023. So, about a year ago my, 31M, cousin Alice, F19, moved in with my wife, F28, on her 18th birthday after being told she needed to move out on said birthday from her parents, early slash mid 50s it can enough to do the math, house by said parents. I'm here with an update at her suggestion. The good. A year later she's a year into an engineering degree, she's been playing lots of hockey, raised a couple of steers all on her own and at her therapist's recommendation she's down to monthly sessions after a brief stop at bi-weekly after starting with weekly. She's the same sweet kid but without the extra unneeded stress of being treated like an also ran alongside her younger siblings. The bad. Her dad showed up about a month after my original post and there was a confrontation of sorts that ended with a peace bond being issued with restrictions on how Bill and Tanya could contact Alice, myself, my missus or a couple other family members that got involved. After the six months required by the peace bond, Tanya started getting back up to her old tricks but Bill seems to have smartened up a bit. The peace bond meant she has a limited contact with her siblings which has been tough. The oldest, 15M, started out pretty hostile but some of the other cousins filled him in on what was going on. I got blamed for his sudden shift in attitude, because we've established that I am just the worst with jazz hands and everything. The silly. Gossipy family mellowed out when they realized that the literal gravy train wasn't going to stop at the station for them. Thanksgiving last year was 26 people compared to the 60 plus that came the last year I threw it prior to COVID restrictions. Easter this year was back up to an even 40 so we're probably going to plateau a little short of the old numbers. As for resolution to the problem, Bill has been texting Alice every couple of days to check in. 
They've gone for coffee a few times after the peace bond expired. I'd go to his funeral but not his birthday party were Alice's words when I asked her about where they're at. I'm hoping time can heal that wound but she's been really good at setting boundaries. To quote one of the great warrior poets of our time, John Cougar Mellencamp, life goes on. I'll answer questions if it's allowed, otherwise, here's some closure guys. Edit was to fix spelling. Comments. On Tanya and Bill, editors note I'm including this one because I love Oops writing. Yeah the two of them are a bit of mustard shy of a sandwich sometimes. They've sworn up and down that they weren't actually going to kick her out and that it was meant to smarten her up and stuff like that, but whether or not they're lying is for someone who cares more about it to figure out. Kiddo's safe and sound. That's what matters. Where they're from. Oh, Canada. That part's not a secret. It's a big place. People from rural Canada talk funny. Truth in television. One more thought on his family and their relationship. I was Alice from my generation of the family tree and thankfully, while I didn't have a relative to throw me a bone the chief took me under his wing. Because of this, they, rightly, assume I have a chip on my shoulder and am projecting my own frustration and hurt on the situation. They're, wrongly, assuming that the chip, frustration and hurt are the sole motivating factors and that I'm seeing parallels between us that aren't there because of it. This has lead some of the family that got one side of things and not others to be hesitant to take anything I say slash do slash think at face value. Is what it is I suppose. New update, March 28, 2024. A friend sent me a YouTube video of Microsoft Sam narrating the previous posts and said this sounds like your whole mess dude. The other day which got me reading through the old comments and reminiscing on a slow afternoon. Because I'm a bit scatterbrained, I'm going to do this update in three parts, what's happened, what's happening, and miscellaneous comment slash question answering. First up, what's happened? It's been a greasy horror show in a lot of ways but everyone I care about is okay. That's a win, and we take those. I can go into a little more detail because I don't have to follow the Ida rules, just the Reddit ones. So, Bill. He's been trying his best, I'll give him that. The guy's as sharp as a sack of wet mice on his best day so him doing his best isn't particularly impressive but he's trying and that's really all you can ask of a person. He was texting Alice every day slash every other day and seemed to genuinely want to fix their relationship. They started to communicate less after a month or so, still texting weekly. I admit, I got my hackles up over that but Alice told me we didn't have enough to talk about when I live there to talk every day, once a week is plenty. They've gone for coffee a few times. They've gone to the restaurant in town or sometimes the gas station with all the old farts on coffee row as Bill's been advised to stay away from me, my missus, our property and our respective places of work, foreshadowing, more on this later, but we've been cordial when we've crossed paths by accident a few times. There's no actual court order, the peace bond has long since expired but it's a small community and one of the constables at the local detachment told him that it wouldn't reflect well on him if he went looking for trouble and a judge had to deal with it again. He and Tanya are separated. That was the first night he came down to the house since the day he showed up and I beat the brakes off him and got the peace bond. They've been fighting non-stop about Alice since we took her. Their oldest son has refused to talk to him since they separated back in October. Their younger son has been weathering the storm as well as a kid can. Their daughter is a total daddy's girl and is devastated that she's only seeing her dad on the weekend. I'm not privy as to what the specifics are. Bill came over devastated and upset. He was three sheets to the wind and we were the only place within staggering distance. Tanya told him to leave and that if he didn't, she'd call the cops. Nobody's told me what happened that night and to be honest, I don't give enough of a shit to ask. Reaping is never as fun as sowing and Bill's learning that. This has thankfully not impacted Alice too much. Her oldest brother has been a bit of a shit ass about things but she's thankfully seeing the parallels between their situations and taking it in stride. A quick aside on that subject, I'm very proud of her. She's become able to navigate some incredibly nuanced situations with a level of emotional intelligence that I know she didn't pick up from me, so we're gonna chalk that up to my missus going full mama bear, speaking of, that's some more foreshadowing. On to Tanya, she and Bill are separated. I didn't talk to her when we were talking so I haven't received updates since. She's told the kids that it's all Alice's fault to varying degrees of success. It sucks, but in helping Alice how we have, we've positioned ourselves to be unable to help her siblings. My genuine hope is that the rest of the family is able to pull off the necessary mental gymnastics to see that those kids are hurting because of how their parents are handling things while still being dead set on Tanya and Bill not being the problem. An epiphany as to what's been going on for the last 15 years would be nice but that's a big ask and I worried that a shift in worldviews of that magnitude could cause serious lasting harm to the tectonic plate beneath them when it happens. On to Alice, she's doing really well. Her life is her own, so I don't want to dive into specifics. I asked her before I decided to post this and she said that it was helpful for healing but now she's at the point where she doesn't want to dwell which is fair. The long and short is, school is good, she's working part-time in an engineering adjacent role at a company that's on her list of places to apply when she convocates. She sold off her steers and hasn't raised anymore because there's only so many hours in a day. 
She's been playing hockey still but in a less competitive league. We're looking at subdividing some of the property in a few years so she can own her own space, build her own place and have independence. That lets us put the title in her name, where she's not beholden to us or attached to us in any way and can have her own flight plan moving forward. She did ask me to say that she's very appreciative for the support that so many strangers have shown. She still goes back and reads comments on the post every now and again. On that subject, I appreciate it as well. On to the rest of the family, with Bill and Tanya separating, I've had a bunch of people who used to be firmly in the camp of me being the source of discord reach out and tell me they'd changed their minds. Not that they apologized or were wrong, just that their opinions had changed on the subject. I told them to piss up a rope and suck the wet end. We're done hosting the large gatherings at every holiday. I know the posts didn't really touch upon my missus's family or how they felt on the subject. What it comes down to is they were supportive from the sidelines but are wise enough not to do the dance with the devil that is engaging with my side of the family. If her family were a small farm town full of honest, hard-working people mine is the meth-riddled trailer park across the tracks. They've been coming out in force for family events, even cousins that live quite a drive away and we're not close with. She told them that I've made being the host for family stuff a big part of who I am and what makes me happy and they responded in kind. A lot of my side of the family is still coming but it's a much smaller number of people. Still a lot to cook for, but I enjoy it and it's all people that respect us and care coming instead of showing up for a free meal and booze. As for my missus, that's some exciting news that was alluded to previously, we've officially begun creating an army of clones. Granted, real clones are expensive and require a lab, so we've opted to make an artificial clone. We've got a little boy on the way, due end of July. She didn't want too much about her put into the post but she signed off on that part. It's exciting, but also intimidating and that leads to the next part. This definitely impacted me in a bigger way than I imagined. The original post was really about Alice and there's a reason for that. I'm all figured out, I'm a grown man and I've got my life in order. She was a scared, neglected kid that needed help. After we got through everything and she was safe, sound and on track, I read through the comments on the posts and a few of them really stood out. They bothered me in a weird way that I couldn't explain. People were consistently pointing out that it's a lot easier to step in and make waves to do the right thing when you were already the black sheep. That really cut deep, in a good way, it made me do a lot of thinking and introspection which I think has led me to a better place overall. I haven't talked much about myself but I wanted to do so a little bit now that everyone else is taken care of. I grew up being beaten like a powwow drum and was a vicious little bastard through most of my childhood and teen years. I grew out of that lashing out behavior eventually and got a job in the oil patch with one of my uncles. I actually met my wife through work as she was one of our payroll admins and my messy writing made a lot of extra work for her. It's a super cute story but not one for Reddit. I met the chief working in the patch and he really instilled in me the importance of being part of a community. He got me into coaching hockey, volunteering at community events. I'm still a volunteer firefighter 10 years later because of his guidance. My entire adult life, I've always been the stable, stoic rock for everyone else. I'm a very tall, robust man with a booming voice and a big laugh. I can fix anything with a screwdriver and a set of vice grips. If you have a problem, I know everyone in town and can get you to the right person and probably get you a discount. I've volunteered in my community everywhere I've been able to. I've mentored with the Big Brothers program, built a playground and facilities for the Boys and Girls Club of Canada, hosted pancake breakfasts and steak nights, ran bingos. I've helped fundraise to cover medical expenses for people I've never heard of or met before the fundraiser. I'm a damn good person, and I'm proud of it. I thought my family saw that and was proud of me too. Realizing that no they weren't proud of me, I just went from being a liability to an asset in their eyes was rough. I didn't have a breakdown per se, but it definitely affected me in a big way. Thankfully, I'm married to the most amazing person to grace this earth and she helped me through it and supported me every step of the way. Along the way, the family that is genuinely proud of me and that care about me and love me came through too. We had stopped trying for kids since the start of all this mess and I wasn't sure I wanted to start back up again because if I could do all that and my family didn't love me, what more could I do? And worse, what if whatever was wrong with me and my family meant I wouldn't love my kids? All is well, life is good and I'm back to being the BFG which is how I'm happiest. To answer slash address a few consistent comments slash questions I've seen across the posts. I have no clue to this day what Bill and Tanya's problem with Alice is. Bill does seem to genuinely want to do right by Alice. I spoke with him a bit when I first had concerns but to quote Gandalf the White, I looked into his eyes and saw no deception. He's a fool, but an honest one. As long as Alice is comfortable and he's going to be a source of positive energy moving forward I think she's better off with him in her life in some capacity than without him. The chief is a good man and he had a similar upbringing to me but worse because it was socially acceptable and often encouraged to beat the tar out of your kids at that point in time. He's the kindest, gentlest soul I've ever met. I've never considered writing and it's not something that interests me. I've been told I have the gift of the gab and I've essentially just written down a stream of consciousness as I would speak it. Sorry for the silly turns of phrase. 
I'm from the tree line in the prairies, we talk funny here. My alpaca's name is Olivia Cromwell and she's a cantankerous bitch. She bits, spits and stomps when provoked, threatened, insulted, awake or because she feels like it. My wife compares my ability to work with her to Chris Pratt's character in Eurasic World and the Raptors. I tell her I just have a way with aggressive women. She sticks her tongue out at me. I use a lot of aviation terminology in my day-to-day -day speech because I worked in an aviation-adjacent industry, usually shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with the chief who was a pilot in the Air Force. I've picked up a lot of the terms and slang. One last thing, a lot of comments were along the lines of I wish I had a relative like that and other people said be that relative. Just do your best. That's all you can do. Sometimes your best won't be good enough and that's okay. Sometimes you won't win no matter how hard you try and that's just life. Nobody can reasonable expect or ask more of you than that.